Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is an honor to be able to come into your homes sharing the word of God. The word of God brings deliverance, brings healing, brings miracles, signs, wonders. Anything you need from God is based on the word. And today is a very uh, a, a powerful session that we're going to have today because today we're going to be clearing out a lot of minds. And if you do need a healing and you do need a miracle by the power of the prophetic uh, uh, word of God, it can heal. Just be sure right now that you open your spirit, you open your mind, you open your heart. We're going to be clearing a lot of things that have been taught incorrectly. Many times it has not even been taught at all. At all. But it is important to bring it back. The prophetic move of God is something that is very important, has been ignored in many places, and has been taught incorrectly in many places. And right now I am so uh, uh, happy to be able to share this word with you. And, and I know that God is going to use our guests today to be able to impart a word of power. If you need something from God, uh, it's like the Bible says, take advantage of the time that you're in because this is the moment of healing. And if you need a miracle, wherever you are, if it's in the hospital, if it's in the prison, if it's wherever you are, you can receive the word of God and receive your healing today. And I want to open with the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 7. And it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. We have prophets here today. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that many false prophets will rise. But if there are false prophets, that means that there are true prophets. You can't take one from the other. There are prophets that are here that God is revealing his secrets. The prophets by office, not everyone who prophesies are prophets, but the prophets by office that have been called since they were young age, they have been appointed to God's heart, close to God's heart, so they can understand his secrets, his codes, his emotions, what he likes, what he dislikes, what he wants to bring to you. And it is, uh, it, it, they are connected to the atmosphere of God. They're connected to the mind of God. They are connected to the heart of God. And today we're going to bring this to you so that you can receive that breakthrough that you have been waiting for for years, that healing that you've been waiting for for years. And today I want to present to you, and it's an honor to me to present to you, Prophet Jose Font, a man of God that has been used throughout the world, but not only throughout the world, but in my personal life as well. So, Prophet, welcome. Thank you. Please greet our thank people, you, our viewers you. today. Thank you. We are happy to be here, and we thank the men of God here for inviting us. And we're going to have an awesome time and uh, speak the word and maybe teach some things. Yes, uh, yes. For this generation. It's very important. The, the prophetic is very important. Many people have ignored it. Many people have um, taken it away from it. But as we were speaking earlier on today, you know, we can't hit with, 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 with two missing fingers. You, you're sharing something that yes. impacted my life. Yes. You know, God appointed in Ephesians 4, 11, five ministries. Yes. The apostles and the prophets have been removed. And, you know, people are fighting like this. We can't hit like this. We have to hit with the five, correct? Exactly. And it is in, the, in the Old Testament, the, the, the prophets didn't operate inside the church. Mm. When Jesus comes in the picture, he puts the prophets inside the church, in the church to operate. So it's very important that the church embraces the five-four ministries. So we, are, we, we, are, we cannot use and take advantage and the benefits of the punch, yes. the fist of God, until we come together. Come together it's not a competition. We have to come together. We have to work as a team. It's like my, my father-in-law was preaching the other day, you know, if this hand can't al get, get along with this hand, we're, we're dysfunctional. If, if our hands, if our body parts cannot get along, we're going to be completely dysfunctional. You know, it, it's something that you said that, that, that really impacted my life just now. You know, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. Well, who knows more? Who knows what? You know, God is not seeking for so much knowledge. He's just seeking for willingness. Exactly. Obedience. Uh, a consecration, commitment is a big word. And, you know, I, I believe, you know, God has used you in my personal life. I know how, how God has used you in your ministry um, and, and how powerful God has been using you throughout the world. But in my life as well, uh, you were the, the very first prophet God used in my life. After he spoke to me audible, he told me the two things. Wow. I did not understand. I did not understand at all. When I go to St. Cloud, Florida, you're preaching. The Lord uses you. There's two things. You do it or you do it. I, I have learned how to embrace a word of prophecy, especially when it comes to a prophet. This is extremely important. And many people, you know, when, when the prophecy does not fulfill, you know, not the prophet's fault. No, it's not. You did not receive the word. You did not co walk conform to the word. I always say the, the prophetic word always requires an action. Yes. Jesus would say, you know, go grab the five, the five uh, vessels and, and bring them and fill it. So when Jesus would speak, 
he would tell people to do conform to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So when, when the, the prophetic word is being released, we have to walk conform to the word because if we don't walk conform to the, to the word of prophecy, that prophecy is not going to become real. That, that's, that is, is, the, is what people need to understand, that most of the, I, I could say 90% or 95% of prophetic words are instructions. Instructions. It comes through instructions. Wow. If you follow instructions, oh, yes. you will get to your miracle. If you follow instructions, that's why I always teach and I say, even in my church and in the school of prophets that I teach, is I, I tell them, every prophetic word comes to an instruction and you need to learn how to follow the instruction to get to your miracle. Because yes. the prophet doesn't bring the miracle. Mm -hmm. The prophet brings the instruction that will take you to your miracle. Wow, that is powerful. I remember... The first word that God has spoken to me as an evangelist, as a man of God, you know, as already in office as an evangelist, um, the Lord came up to me and he spoke to me once again in audible. He told me, you will only be able to increase your capacity to receive when you learn how to embrace my correction. Many people think that when God corrects, it's to embarrass. No, I believe that it is areas in our life that we have to close in order to open other doors to receive open heavens in that area. But that is what the prophetic does. The prophetic corrects. Yes. It confronts. Yes. And that's why many people feel intimidated. That's why many people are, are scared of it. When they see a, a prophet of God, they recognize the anointing over him. They feel intimidated because the prophet deals with correction. The prophet deals with confrontation. Mm -hmm. The prophet is obedient, you know. And it's like, you know, the, the book of Amos has this saying, you know, that, that God revealeth the, his secrets to the prophet. So God can reveal to the evangelist. God can reveal to a lot of people, you know, but it's like his personal secrets he reveals it to the prophets that shows me right now that there are still prophets there's secrets that are being revealed prophets are are, are not uh, uh better than nobody or, or better than any other position in christ like better than an evangelist no it's just that when god chooses a prophet is god choosing friends intimate friends that he can he, he can talk to them and let them know what he's thinking and what is he about to do? What, what, what is it that he's going to do and what he's about to bring? And he wants to share with his friends. So you said correction. Correction, if we look in the Bible, correction is the highest expression of love. Wow. You know, and we don't see it like that. The Bible says that he whom he loves, he corrects. That means correction is love. I still love you if I correct you. If you as a father take time to correct a son, that means you are investing time because you still love that yes, child. Yes. So prophets come to edify, to bring uh, exhortation. exhortation and comfort, yes. you know, and bring perfection. Because the Bible says is we are here to bring perfection into the body. So to bring perfection, we have to take away and cancel those things that are bringing uh, the wrong yes. flow yes. in the body. Yes, so in order, I always say, you know, before we teach, we're a student. You know, God, God, when he corrects, especially his prophets, is because he wants to reveal something. He wants to show something deeper. And, you know, it's like I was, I was preaching one time, and I was telling the people, you know, about that, that correction. You know, in, in order to be able to impart, mm -hmm. we have to be willing to receive, you know. And I know that, that God, you know, it's not, it's not that, that, that prophets, you know, are in everyone, because not everyone who prophesies means that they're a prophet, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I teach a lot on what's, you know, the office of the prophet, like yourself. You have um, the, the, the gift of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, and you have the word of God as, you know, an instrument to prophecy because the Bible speaks everything we're seeing, everything we're living, you know, it's, it's prophetic, you know. And when we speak conform to the word, you know, it's prophetic. The things that we're, that we're the times that we're living, this prophetic. But, you know, in order to be an office of, of a prophet, I believe personally, and correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, to be a prophet is not something you can look for. It's not something that you can go towards. It's not something you can ask for. It's something that God does by grace. Yes, it's an election by grace. I believe very strongly that you don't become a prophet. You are already a prophet. Wow. You just wow. need to find doubt if you are or not. Yes, but have to discover it. Also, this don't disqualify somebody from prophesying because a lot of people will be like, oh, so how... Am I going to prophesy if I'm not a prophet? Well, there were many people in the Bible that weren't prophets. And I even know people now that are sharper than some prophets prophesying. Wow. And they're not even prophets. Because wow. you could sharpen your gift. Hmm. And that makes you a strong prophetic person. So many people flow in the gift, not in the office. Exactly. And you can, the, the, the thing is that the anointing is position. Hmm. It's not power. Hmm. When the Lord says, I have anointed you for this, is I put you in this office. Being in the office doesn't make you powerful. Wow. Being in the office doesn't mean you have carry supernatural gifts. 
John the Baptist was in the office, yet he didn't do half of the miracles or no miracle than Elijah, yeah. Elijah. No, he was in an office. He was, he was chosen office. for an assignment. Office, office and anointing means assignment. Now, with their assignment comes the supernatural yes. and manifestations. Back up. Yes, so, yes, there are people who can flow in the prophetic. doesn't mean they are in the office of a prophet because yes. that's a high level ranked. Somebody needs to be more sure. Somebody needs to be, go to a process. Every time God put you to the process, when you are, you know, called to be a prophet, it's God testing you and testing you and yes. testing you and testing you before he sends you. He's like a product. I, got, I have to test it before I put my seal on it. Yes, yes. So we're going to go on a quick break. It's extremely wonderful. We're going through this. It's going to get a lot deeper. It's very uh, amusing how we can um, activate the prophetic to, to create and release healings and, and miracles. But I want you to stay tuned. We're going to go on a quick break. We're going to come right back, and you're going to receive your healing and your miracle. God's Country, seven keys for you to live an extraordinary life by rediscovering your identity, nationality, and purpose. A kingdom book that every leader, minister, and church should have. Pablo speaks about topics and leaves a clear revelation on how the kingdom of heaven functions. He explains the difference between Jesus and religion, a pharisaical mindset, and a kingdom mindset. How kingdom leaders function as God's representatives. He explains the heart and the character of a true leader and how authority can only be received under submission. A kingdom book brought to your life so that you can receive breakthroughs, accelerations, and knowledge. You can obtain your copy at www.trueperspectivepublishing.com or globally everywhere books are sold. Change your mindset to a kingdom mindset today. Welcome back from the break, and I hope you enjoyed the commercials and everything. But now we're going to come right back to what we were speaking about. We're speaking about the prophetic and the office of the prophet. Does it mean that you are uh, flowing in the prophetic does not make you a prophet? I was speaking with Prophet Jose Font, and we're speaking about that God chooses his prophets by grace. It's not something that you can seek towers to. It's not something that you can ask God to make you. It's something like the prophet has said. It is something that God appoints you since before you were born. You're born a prophet. So um, a prophet, it, it, it's, it's mind-blowing what we're speaking about. We were speaking about Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Yeah. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So now, now that we're, we're coming into, into this theme, because I love it a lot, it's something that needs to be taught. Yes. Um, everyone who flows in the, in, in the prophetic, in the prophecy, but they do not have the, the, the office of the prophet, they have to wait for that spirit. Like Revelation chapter uh, 3 says, the spirit of prophecy, you know, that's the mantle. It has to wait for, for the mantle to arrive in order for them to prophesy. Yes. But the prophet does not have to wait for that mantle to come because they are a walking gift. Yes. They, that gift is already in them. Talk to me a little bit more of that. Yes, well, that. They, they, you, are, you are walking in the gift. You, you have some insight. It's some revelation that comes through time and yes. experience. And the revelation that, get, that God gives to a prophet is deep as in what he wants him to say in a specific time. So it's like you grow into the maturity. And things. Because when you have people who are immature, yeah. flowing in the gift of prophecy, they can manipulate people in the wrong now, I know prophets way. hate manipulation. Yeah, so, so genuine prophets don't like manipulation, genuine yeah. ones. Yes. Fake ones does. But yeah. genuine ones don't like manipulation because manipulation takes you always to the wrong place. It's corruption. Yeah. So the thing is that when you're talking about flowing in the prophetic and all these things, there are people who are not prophets, but they are prophetic. Yeah. They are prophetic. And, and you mentioned something in the beginning when you was opening. You said, we are connected to God's emotions. Yes. We are connecting to what God likes, what he doesn't like. Yeah. And that's why they, has, they have discovered that a lot of people who are bipolar, supposedly bipolar, and have uh, anxiety or things like that that happen within them, is really that they carry a gift. Yeah, wow. And they are reading atmospheres. And they don't understand why I was happy in my house. And when I came in this building, I'm getting all bombarded with all these thoughts and all these feelings and all these things that are happening to me. It's because they have a gift yeah. to be able to pick up, to be able to deal with the situations that are inside that building, people who are dealing with different situations. So you wow. could connect with somebody and you are happy in your house and then all of a sudden you feel this heaviness. Ooh. And, this, and you think it's about you. Connect, there's a connection you have with God. So then you think you get anxious. You be like, where, why am I feeling like this? You are feeling that because God is letting you feel the weight. 
That is when you read the atmosphere, what is operating, what is the principality operating there, what is the spirit, demon spirits that are operating there. So you need to understand that a lot of the times that God chooses to speak to your emotions mm. and not give you a word because uh, emotions don't really listen to words. It's just a feeling. So people understand emotion better than words because you could misinterpret a word. Yes. God could tell you do this and you think he's telling you do something else. Wow. But when he speaks to your emotion, you use your emotions every day. Yeah. So you know what fear is. Yes. You know what happiness and joy is. Yes. You know what confusion is because you go through it almost daily. Yes. So he speaks to your emotion to let you know for sure what is happening at that, at that moment. And I know as a prophet, you know, God uses his prophets by office you know, for many things, you know, for many things, you're connected to his secrets. That's why you were, you were, you were um, explaining that you feel the heaviness because your mind is connected to God's mind. Your heart is connected to his heart. Your feelings are connected to, to his feelings. And if there's something that is not right, you're going to pick it up quickly because you are, you are, you are, you know, feeling what he feels, thinking what he thinks, seeing what he sees. And God uses the prophets to reveal and expose the root of the problem. What's happening? Yes. And that, this, is, this is the same reason why you need to read. I don't, I, I don't believe we are supposed to operate as Old Testament prophets because that time already passed. Yes. We are New Testament prophets. Yes. So, uh, but it, 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 it doesn't hurt to go back to some actions and behavior yes. of the old prophets. Like, for example, when they went to go give a strong message to a king, they did not sit down to eat with them. Mm. This is not a celebration. Yeah. This is not something wow. happy that we are here eating happy. Mm. The Lord is angry at you. I come to tell you, don't save the Lord. You need to repent. You need to correct this, correct that. So even God used the prophets in the Old Testament uh, with their behavior to let the king or anybody they were ministering to, how he felt about them. Hmm. I can eat with you and celebrate with you when the Lord is angry at you and you need to fix something. Oh, wow. So he also uses you so people can feel. When, when a prophet comes in the scene and you feel confronted already and he hasn't even spoken, Wow. That's the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of God all over him. And it's, in, in order to operate in that matter, you have to have a connection with God to be able to have his secrets revealed. You know, secrets are something that God does not reveal to just anyone. Secrets are not something that God just opens up to just anyone. Because if he, it's like, you know, if, you know, you know, prophet must know when to speak, when to, to, to be quiet, when to put everything in prayer. But, you know, the, the office of the prophet, you know, I believe that not everyone's a prophet. Even in the, in the Old and New Testament, you know, not everyone was a prophet. You know, a lot of people want to be prophets, you know. But not everyone is a prophet. I believe that when God, you know, calls a prophet, it's since, like you said, since he was born, you just come with it, something that God chooses by grace. And this has not been taught in the church. Yes. You know, right now people just say, get up and, and, and say something, you know. Every, you know, in order to, to, to be able to speak and prophesy, you know, if you're not under the office, the mantle of the prophetic has to be, the spirit of prophecy has to be in. And he says that the spirit of the prophet is subject. Yes. That means you are able to... You see, the majority of a prophet mm. is how long he's able to keep a message inside his belly until it is time to release. Wow. Only a rookie, only somebody in kindergarten, yes. only somebody who is a beginner wants to say everything that comes to him at the time. Wow. You have to be able to marinate that and let that sink in and wait for the right timing mm. to then be able to speak. Wow. That is and wow. then it's in the right time that that word will do what it's supposed to do. So we, we, we need to teach the people that... Like, like, I, like I was teaching in my uh, prophetic school, uh, I was telling them, how do you know when is God speaking? When is not speaking? How wow. do you know when, when God is saying something? You read the Bible. Wow. And many say, yeah, but everybody says that. Yeah, but let me give you a little secret here. You read the Bible not only to find out how God speaks, but the things that he don't say. Mm. Because one, advant Secrets. Yeah, one, Secrets. one advantage that we have is that God doesn't change. And when you're dealing with a person that doesn't change, you can more or less know what he says and what he doesn't say. Yeah. If somebody says to you, the prophet spoke behind your back, but yet you know how I talk, and they mention words in the vocabulary that I don't use, you're going to know right away. That he did it. not say that. He did not say that. So that's yeah. one way to discover how God speaks. When wow. something comes into your spirit and he speaks to you, you know what he doesn't say. You know, somebody told me one time, how do you know that God speaks to you? And I told him, if you close your eyes and your mother calls out your name in the middle of a crowd, you know it will be your mom. Why? Oh, yeah, I know it will be my mom because I know my mom. 
Same thing. I know God. When you know God, you know his likes, you know his dislikes, you know what pleases him, you know what displeases him, you know what he would say, you know that he wouldn't say, you know what he would do, you know, you know what he wouldn't do. You know, when you see so many disorder, you know, in, in, in an action, a situation, then you said this was God, you know, I'm sorry. When you go to the bread, and I know my God, yeah. he does not work like that. It's like how you were saying, you have to be close to his heart so he can reveal your secret. Many times, that is a, that is a very big thing because many prophets lean towards what God says yet ignores what he doesn't. And what he doesn't say is what sharpens you. Wow. <laughs> it's what sharpens you. Wow, that because is power. As so, be, because as soon as something comes from the spirit, in the spirit realm, boom, you be like, oh, no, 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 no. This, this cannot, I read the Bible. That's why a prophet and somebody who's called to the prophetic has to read the Bible every, every day, day and every day. talk to God every, every day. day. Oh, Communication yes. strengthens what you know about the it's Holy like, Spirit. It's like, it's like it, 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 you know, God, I believe God speaks something new every day. He is so large. He is so huge that he has something new for us every day. And maybe we were connected yesterday, but we're not connected today. We don't know how he is feeling today. We don't know what he Updates. wants to say today. He's always updating, right? You see, we get newspapers every day. Yeah. In the spirit realm, there's newspapers also. Wow. There's <laughs> fresh words. <laughs> Powerful, powerful. <laughs> I've never thought about it like yeah, that. Yeah, you, 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 you receive like updates all the time. Is that people love uh, when they get updates in their phone. Yeah. No, learn how to get updates also in the spirit. Yes. And a lot of that comes through speaking in tongues. Wow. You speak in tongues, you get updates. If you don't know what is speaking in tongues, you're, you're against it. First Corinthians chapter 14 tells you everything about tongues. Go ahead, good. You're sharp. <laughs> you're amazing. But that is, that is great. That is great. Uh, you know, I believe tongues in the spirit. You know, I believe that our, our spirit, uh, when we speak in tongues, is to edify us. You know, we're connected. It's the language we have with God. Only we and God know what's happening here. You know, I'm not against uh, people that don't believe in speaking in tongues. But what I'm saying is uh, you are missing out. Yes. On, on, receiving, on receiving updates. Updates. Because tongues. Wow. Tongues are codes. Wow. And when codes, you see, when you're getting an update in your phone, it's codes. You're right. And then codes fix bugs. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> powerful, 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 powerful. Prophet, I have to have you on again. We got to do a part two to this, to this session. This, is, this has Thank been you. completely incredible. And this is something that has been, you know, that has been, you know, very missed out in the church, has not been taught, and if it has been taught, many times it's been taught incorrectly, but, you know, really quick, I would like you to make a, a, a quick prayer um, and, and release a powerful word over our viewers today. I decree and declare over your life prosperity, abundance. One thing that you need to understand that a prophet carries is he carries sound, and words come through sound, and in the sound, there's prosperity. And prophets are linked to prosperity. So I speak prosperity into your life. I speak abundance into your life, healing into your life. And may every wrong voice, every wrong voice that you, that you hear in your mind be corrected and may you listen to the right voice in the name of Jesus. May you begin to flow and operate in higher dimensions, higher levels of anointing. And may you receive deliverance in your family, deliverance in your mind. And may you be stronger than ever this 2018 in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for viewing us today. I'm Reverend Paolo David Fonseca, and we will be with you again in the next program. God bless you.